This is a Mazda 626. It's a car. Uh, Now this is another quick road test video I'm doing on a car that I don't really know much about. It's a car I've had in for work. Oh look, a fly. Uh, yeah, this is another car I've had in to do some work on and don't know much about it. It's owned by uh, a viewer of the channel, a subscriber. You better subscribe. And I've done some bits and bobs on it. Now you'll have already seen one of the videos on this where I did some faffing about with the rear brake caliper. I've also since replaced the inlet manifold gasket which is a pig, and um, I've done some other little bits and bobs on it. Um, I've completely forgotten what the, oh, window regulator on the back. Uh, you will see this car at Rustaville. Well, you won't see this car at Rustaville because you'll have already been to Rustaville, but you might have seen this car at Rustaville. And if you did, this was filmed before Rustaville. This is the Wednesday. Anyway, um, so what do we know about the Mazda 626? Well, not a fat lot, if I'm honest, hence, the theme of the video, I know nothing about this car. I'm going to let this car talk to me in an automotive, evocative sense. So what can I tell you about this car? Um, well, it's a Mazda 626. It was produced, this one, in 2001. But I think this model of car came about in... <sighs> Mazda fans chip in in the comments, but I think... 1998? 97? I don't remember seeing these any earlier than an S-Reg. Yeah, it's a five-door hatchback. They did a four-door saloon as well. They might have done an estate. Uh, yeah, that's a, pff, about it, really. I mean, it's a nice colour. Yeah, I'm struggling a little bit of things to say with it because there's not really any redeeming features. So we'll, we'll go around it and we'll try and find some things. I mean, the doors make a nice noise when you shut them. Yeah, but whoever stuck that sticker there needs a boot to the head. Speaking of boots, this car has one at the, at the back. Uh, to get into it, you push this button, which a few things I'm going to notice on this car as time goes on, but is that not a bit old school for a car that was made in 2001? I mean, this is a bit Ford Cortina, isn't it? So you push that and then you're in. And it's a big boot, in fairness. It's the most capacious load space. You'll have to excuse all my junk. Um, and some of the owner's junk. But that's, I mean, that's a big boot. Powering this automotive inferno under the bonnet, we have a two litre petrol engine. I don't know how much power this produces. I was told it's similar to the engine well, I suppose it would be, because I was told it was similar to the engine found in the 2.0-litre Ford Probe. Of course, that was a Mazda underneath, so that would make sense. Um, I wouldn't say it's the smoothest engine. It's a bit gruff. The inlet manifold is a pig to change, I can tell you that. It's just an engine. <laughs> it's all right. It works. It's not, nothing really redeeming about it. It's just... Yeah. One thing I have found... Um, interesting with it is that everything in the engine bay is, is is kind of laid out like everything's accessible there's no thought that it's nothing it's completely function over form so you can just get to everything the the battery is not mounted in line with anything it's just there because it kind of fits and then like the abs pump is down there on the inner chassis i don't even can see it probably not yeah, the ABS pump's down there, and then there's the, whatever that is, carbon canister, is it? Or fuel filter or something? And the wiper motor. How many cars do you see with a wiper motor in the engine bay? And it's just everything comes up. Like the, you know, nothing's integrated. Nothing's, like, m m disguised. It's just, no, I'm not going to make it look nice. It's just there. It really is the abyssu pessima of the real world. I don't think they did any funky versions of this car. I don't think there's a GTI, I don't think there's a V6. I mean, yeah, I don't know, maybe there were. I forgot this car existed, to be honest. Space in the back. There is some. But how much? <coughs> that much. Yeah, it's alright. 
you'll probably hear me say that phrase a lot and this it's all right i've just noticed something funky about it though although before i just show you that again with the old school old school old i mean look at that, that when does that ever like it's not integrated into this or this is 2001 come on the doors do make a nice sound um yeah well, i have just noticed observe this this has got to be worth pointing out Hey? Oh. Oh. What's... Oh, bloody hell. Ah! Table. You can turn your passion to see it into a table. Because, I mean, you're not going to have any friends, are you? Or, if it was my own car and I had less respect for it, a footrest. I could put my feet up on it and demonstrate that, but I'm not, so... Because it's not my car. Hmm. Well, that's something. Now you can laugh at a grown man trying to... Is it like that? I see that lever there. Oh, hello. Wow. Seat in a position that I would never have thought I'd see a seat in. There we go, I figured it out. So if I get myself into the cabin, and this is what we're faced with. My glasses, you don't need those. Um, yeah. 86,000 miles on this one. Been in the family a long time. I think brought new, if I remember rightly, by the father. I don't know if, if it's the, the customer of mine or the customer's other half who actually owns this car, but the father of the other half, I believe, um, didn't catch her name, um, I think he bought this car new, but I'm awful with remembering things, so I could be making that up. We've got wood, steady. Uh, I'm asking the term wood to carry a bit of weight there. I mean, looking at that moulding, <laughs> it's, just, it's just so obviously plastic. Um, and there, but not in the back. It's just hit there and there and there. And um, we have the law, which is, I'm delighted to see this. If no other reason, then I think the leather in this car, if it had a leather option, would probably be absolutely horrendous. So, but it's nice to see a nice airy interior. It's nice and light. I mean, it's grey, yes. 50 shades of grey, but it is light and airy. There's a sunroof, which has independent buttons. I mean, why? Let's have a look. Let's show you how that works. So if you want to slide your sunroof, you do this. And of course, because it's Japanese, it works. And this is in good condition, look at this. But if you want to shut it again, you do this. And then you'd think if you want to tilt it, you just keep going. No, it's a different switch. Only you don't go up like that, you go up by pressing the, the back button. Oh, hang on. What's the point of that? Right, so if you tilt it by pressing backwards and then press slide, it will automatically go to slide. If you press tilt, it won't do anything. This is not a Saab, is it? This starter motor sounds exactly like a certain Ford Fairmont. Freakishly so. Uh, so in the cabin we have uh, switch gear and buttons variously. Uh, we have air conditioning, which I believe works. Yes, it does, because if I push that and then uh, watch the revs, yes, it's kicking in and out. We have air con. Um, we do have these, I mean, I'm not trying to get all what car about this, but these heater controls are horrendous. This, I mean, this is so old and flimsy, and this is tiny. I mean, 
and at night these don't light up and just, just need the bulbs changing but it's just so yeah i've not seen heated controls as i mean it's obvious what they do it's not complicated they're just not user friendly because they're just so small and down there and this is these are all the same size you think you could almost swap these around maybe they're modular being a slightly later japanese car we have indicators on the left I mean they work so on the right you will notice and i actually appreciate this i think this is a good move from mazda so you've got your wipers but because it's not a sort of car i'm used to it's not up to put the wipers on up is a mist uh it's down to put them on you can adjust the delay in the intermittent slow and fast um, and then on the end here now this is the rear wiper you can have the option and i've never seen this on another car genuinely of off which is probably fairly standard intermittent and the wiper was going there don't know why i did that because all you can see is the phone um or on completely uh, constantly so it's going there you go oh it's getting dry so we go one more It looks like there's two wipers there. It's, I promise you it's not. It's a shadow, but it looks quite cool. So that's then back to on. That's on, sorry. Back to intermittent. And you're like, yeah, I know how intermittent works, dickhead. You have the option. How You just, you just don't get that. You get both options. Am I scratching about here, trying to find things to talk about? I probably wouldn't talk about the um, gearbox, which is just an, an auto slush box. Um, it's just a four speed automatic gearbox. It does have cup holders though, look. Down here, push the button. Look at that. They're very shallow, but because obviously nowadays everyone has to have cup holders. They're a must, 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 uh, must, must, must. Yeah, I mean, for some reason it's important now. Uh, but this car has cup holders. Two of them. Well, let's let's hit the road. Let's see if this thing can get under my skin. You'll have to excuse the hat hair. Um, also, you'll have to excuse the fact that I only have uh, the one camera, which is my phone, because my thingy one has just jammed. So the green light's on and it won't do anything. Right. Nice! Alright, let's go and see what this baby's made of. So, automatic box, and we are away. Last time I drove out of that lay-by was um, in the Honda Beat. Which is a very different proposition to this. So, you might, so far, be picking up on a tinge of negativity and be thinking, that's a bit mean, that's someone's pride and joy, that car. Well, firstly, don't worry. Uh, they do look after this car, don't get me wrong, they do. They're proud of this car, they look after this car. Rightly so. Um, but at the same time, I think his words when he brought, brought it in were like, yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, it's not It's not an exciting car, is it? It's, it's just... It's just a car. And you know, everyone's like, wow, insight, it's just a car. Well, yes, it is. What's it go like? Right, it picks up well. That's 40, 50. I'm gonna give the guy on the bike coming the other way an absolute heart attack. Um, it picks up fine. So I don't know anything about this engine. It's a two liter 16 valve, chain driven very simple very straightforward no variable valve time and not i know of anything like that um not a smooth engine particularly it, it kind of behaves a bit more like it's an eight valve if i'm honest it's um it's quite punchy actually it's quite torquey i don't know how much power it's got it's hard to tell when you've got four long gears it goes okay actually it, it yeah all joking aside it does move all right 
Uh, I don't know how much power it's got. I'm going to guess. See, Japanese engine, you've got to be careful with Japanese engines because you drive them and you think, oh, that goes. And you think, well, that must have loads of power. And then you read up on them and they don't. And it's just about the kind of the broad torque output that they've got, he says, having driven a Honda Beat. But majority of Japanese engines, Toyotas, Nissans, that kind of thing. Oh no, I had a Nissan actually, that was gutless. Primera GT, that was very peaky. All right, apart from that, and apart from the Hondas, am I talking crap? Maybe. No, listen. So, Honda, um, Toyota, Mazda, um, Mitsubishi, you know, not, just, just a cooking two litre four pots, not, nothing, nothing screamy, nothing out there, nothing, you know, made for racing around. They're, they all feel punchy. They've got that kind of same quality that Vauxhall engines used to have. Do you remember the old Vauxhall 8 valves and things? They all felt punchier than they were. Even like a 1.3 or in a Nova felt like more punchy than it actually was, or more powerful than it actually was, more eager. Um, and that's kind of like the feeling this gets. So I don't know, power-wise, I'm gonna guess this is, it. I would have thought it was more like 140 um, by the feel of it. Maybe 145, something like that. 150 at a push if I was allowing for the fact that the gearbox was hampering it a little bit but I think I'm gonna guess 140 but because of what I've just said about the, the sort of Japanese engines and, and the character they can have I would not be at all surprised to learn it's got something like 120 or something like that or 115 must come quite low like 3,000 something like that it's just got quite a lot of punch to it it would uh, I w it would make me think the engine is more of a stroker than a aura let's be honest the sort of people who would bought this car back in the days were people who weren't really fussed about cars and for those people this engine would have been fine they'd have, in fact if anything they'd have thought well that goes quite well because you're not winding it round to setting lap times or anything like that just the initial the initial throttle touch yeah it's not bad at all so engine aside what else um well it feels well made um it doesn't feel particularly rattly uh it feels yeah it feels quite sturdy i, I feel like i'm sat quite high up i don't know if that's just the seating position of the people who own it because I obviously try not to move around the seat too much um, on customers cars but the view out is okay uh, it's the visibility in the rear is weird because it's not it's not really bad visibility like it's not it's not that the, the visibility is poor but it just seems like it is people are going to be like well then maybe it is duh well I don't know it's a massive window but I don't know just so here we go, we're on the twisties now. This is where the car starts to struggle a little bit because it, it's, um, it is not a lithe, agile, responsive machine, my God. There is zero feedback through the steering, absolutely nothing. You do not know how unhappy the car is at all. You don't know whether the front tyres are going to break traction or whether they're like perfectly happy. The body roll, it, the, the suspension's not great. It's kind of like, it's quite taut. The ride isn't amazing. It's not bad, which is kind of going to be the theme with this car. It, nothing on it is bad. There's no part of it that's bad. It's all fine. But there's nothing that's great. There's nothing that's really good. But yeah, the the hand okay no the handling's not great that's it i'll go back yeah no the handling's not great it's kind of like the suspension's quite taut to start with so it feels like you can turn in it feels like you can hoof it in um and then as you hoof it in you begin to realize that you've got 
no feedback, and then you get body roll. Because it's not made for hoofing it around countryside, is it? Let's be honest. The steering's quite woolly in terms of its gearing. Like there's, it's, uh, there's quite a lot of arm twirling needed before you actually get anywhere with it. I'm actually starting to get like wrist ache driving it. I think it's because the steering wheel was adjustable and it's, sat, it's set quite high. But um, yeah, no, the handling is not something I would, it's safe. Again, for the kind of driving that these cars would do, it's fine. When you consider that back in 2001, the Mark III Mondeo was about to come out, or had come out, the Mark II Mondeo drove way better than this. Um, I can only really compare it to cars I own. I can only really compare it to a Xantia, which was a, a much older car in terms of when the car first came out. They came out in 93? February 93 but they feel more modern than this that's the really odd thing about this car it doesn't feel like a 2001 car it feels like a 1990 car you know maybe it is the, the Mazda guys and girls might go in the comments and be like well no actually the floor the, the, you know the floor pan of that car mechanically that is basically a 1990 626 they might say something like that. I don't know maybe it is but it really does feel old. It feels a lot older than a 2001 car. I mean, the brakes are just, they actually feel okay. The, the pe pedal's perfectly weighted for a normal car. <laughs> it's just a normal car, isn't it? Um, seat's kind of a bit firm, not horrendous. I can see why in my last video where I did a test drive where I drove the Honda Beat and said Japan makes some of the world's most boring cars and some of the world's most fun cars. When I said boring cars, this is kind of what I meant. And I don't mean boring in a nasty way because at the end of the day, A, whether something is boring or not is completely subjective. So what I find boring, the owner of the car or uh, enthusiasts of the cars might not. They might love it. Um, to me, it's kind of pretty bland but then if you read any magazine from the era they would have said the same thing and that's not all Japanese cars this size I mean Mazda made the Zados 6 which I think look really good they might drive like this I don't know but they look really good they had a V6 I think they didn't have a 2 litre V6 um, there was the you know things like Honda Accord Type R I mean Hondas generally are like I think they're a little step ahead in terms of the driving dynamics of the other Japanese cars but yeah, Mitsubishi Galant, I imagine, would be pretty similar to this. Although they were quite a good looking car. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's pretty, pretty bland. However, there is a twist. I always try to look for a positive. And I have my positive, and it's a genuine positive. And it might surprise people when they hear me say this, but the world is a better place for this car being on the road. No, actually that's a complete lie, it's polluting, so it's, it's a worse place for this car being on the road, but philosophically, the world is a better place for this car being on the road. You're like, why? Because it's here, because someone is enjoying it. Someone is, someone likes it. Someone has sent it off to a garage and paid to have it repaired. Most people would have scrapped this ages ago. You see cars like this owned by, older people who you know they get packed off to the scrapyard they've no need to keep it going they just you know there's part of a bereavement sale or something like that oh we'll just scrap that and it's as good as new it works the only thing that doesn't work in this car at the moment is the heater I had to bypass it because the heater matrix started leaking. Well, it didn't start leaking. I imagine it's been leaking a long time, but it became apparent to me the other day that it was leaking quite badly. And because he wants to take this car to Rustable, um, where this car will be very welcome and look, it will look the part. It really will. Um, this is prime auto shite material. This car, uh, yeah, it will. Um, he'll limp it to Rustable with no heater. And at the moment, if the weather's like it is now, he won't need it. Anyway, 
Um, yeah, so going back to the, the whole boring car thing. Is it a boring car? Through its era, in 2001, I think this is probably just about one of the most boring cars you could have bought. It's just a car. Oh, it was a Fiat Marea weekend. Wow. Does that re that's a boring car, really. It's just because it's European, it's kind of got a bit of joie de vivre. It's got a bit of... Mmm, something. I don't know. Um, the Japanese cars don't have it. But because it was a Fiat, no one really accused it of being boring. But yeah, the Fiat Morea would have been a kind of rival to this. Um, yeah, so, yeah, going back to it. Yeah, a very boring car of its era. You, you could have bought a Peugeot 406. You could have bought, well, I suppose there weren't really any exciting cars, but, you know, so many cars back then drove so much better than this does. So from its era, for its time, this is a really dull car. But it's not boring now. Some people might go, oh, yeah, it is. It's only got 100 and something horsepower. Uh, well, it's like, well, yeah, newsflash. Power doesn't mean it's boring or not boring. You can have modern cars that have got a ton of horsepower and are dull as hell. You know, it's the fact that it exists in its, re in its original form, it's still got its wheel trims. It's, the only thing it hasn't got is its stereo. It's still got its dealer plates on it. Well, that's not boring anymore. Boring cars now are like... I'm trying to think of a boring Kia Sorento? What's that? Ford Cougar. Ford Cougar. That's the modern version of this. It's just a car. This is now an e a product of a bygone era. We don't have cars like this anymore. These big five-door hatchback, fastback type things, you know, just they just don't exist anymore. Well, not in our market anyway. Is this a very good one? No, not really. <laughs> but I'm happy that it's here. I'm happy that I get to drive it. I'm happy that I've got to look around it. It's... I feel I'm privileged, just as I would be if it was worth £200,000. It's like, somebody likes this car, they look after it, and they're proud of it. And that's as it should be, it brings someone enjoyment. So no, it's not boring anymore. In fact, to be honest, when he takes this to Rustaville, let's make a bet. If you went to Rustaville and you saw this car, write in the comments how many other Mazda 626s of this shape that you saw at Rustaville. I'm going to keep an eye out for them as well. We'll reconvene in the comments. But I bet you, now, there are no other Mazda 626s of this shape there. So it's not boring, is it? Right. That's me done. I'm now going to go back via some roads where I can flip the camera around and get some slightly different shots of the interior so that this video wasn't, like, one take of a man talking while he's driving. So, uh, yeah.